great. Thank you. Uh, good evening and welcome to the April uh, 14th <coughs> Tony Boot hearing. We have a couple of uh, announcements. First, we'll do the general business. Um, uh, we need a uh, motion on approval for the minutes of last meeting. I'll make a motion. Motion by Mary. We have a second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. It's going to be signed, Kel. Um, for the purposes of the applications and the applicants tonight, the, um, all the notices for the hearings tonight have gone out the, um, to all the abutters as well. I think there was a, a small hiccup um, with the hearing being posted outside Town Hall. The requirement is a 48-hour posting outside uh, is a public uh, forum area. It was time stamped accordingly fine within 48 hours. However, it didn't get posted outside <coughs> until uh, 24 hours. So each applicant has the availability to continue to be heard tonight, but also please understand that it, it's a possibility someone could appeal any decisions they made. Um, I don't see that happening, but it's just that we didn't hit that 48 hour posting outside the all the uh, advertisements all the abutting aspects that's all been completed in a timely manner it's just that piece of paper didn't get posted outside in the front board okay so with that um this is on the uh hearing for uh, 710 on the application of michael and robin tassino are they here dave you're gonna well welcome uh, come on in step down. you're gonna welcome a new member oh i forgot that <laughs> i forgot to welcome the new member uh john mr Annie, welcome and uh, well, John. congratulations to um, Mark for a uh, full-time appointment. Thank you. And we hope that Brian gets the uh, gets on as a full-time member as well. And Charlie, eventually we all get on. We'll all leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so with that, um, did you understand my my comment concerning the posting outside? Just wanted to make sure. Yes, okay. Thank you. All right. This is on the application of Michael Robert Tassino of 29 Emmons Street in Milford. Special permit relief pursuant to 3.1 of the zoning bylaws in relation to a parcel land on Emmons Street, known in numbers 29. Special permit relief is sought in order to permit an addition and or an extension or other change on the structure to extend pre existing <coughs> performing structure. To match the existing building line, said extension and addition is to be used for a garage under with a kitchen extension above. Uh, it's going through the file. Let me first comment that the on the panel tonight will be the full uh, the five full-time members since we're all in attendance. And secondly, I'll go right to the application. This looks like an application is going to be for a ten, uh, 20 by 20 uh, 20 by 25 one car garage addition <coughs> kitchen extension above the garage. Um, the applicant was asked, please explain the uh, special permit sought in harmony with the general purpose of the zoning bylaw of the town of Milford. The applicant states that the proposed addition is for a garage under with kitchen extension above. No additional dwe dwelling units or bedrooms uh, will be uh, added. Concerning with the proposed use be on the premises not create undue traffic or impair pedestrian safety. Uh, the applicant states no additional units or occupants are proposed, and at that point, it's, uh, and the uh, proposed is to the rear of the dwelling away from the street and sidewalk. Uh, concerning it, would there be any, uh, uh, create any nuisance or hazard affecting the health, safety, and welfare of the general public, the applicant states the proposed addition will not be placed any closer to the lot lines and no additional units or bedrooms are to be proposed. With that, um, the planning board reviewed this at their regular scheduled meeting and did indicate a favorable recommendation. The town plan a letter indicates um, <coughs> the applicant requested a 20 by 25 two-story addition to the existing two-family dwelling on the subject property. The addition will extend an existing building line which is six feet from the side, north side property line, 10 foot side, yard setback is required. Proposed two-story addition will be back will, will be at the back of the existing structure and will consist of a garage on the first floor. The, the second floor will contain a kitchen for the upstairs dwelling unit. Zoning bylaw provides for such additions of non-conforming buildings via a special permit provided to the extensions of existing buildings and lines. 
Um, Larry Duncan did recommend a favorable report be flown off to the Zoning Board of Appeal. So with that, Mr. and Mrs. Ticino, we'll, we'll, um, we'll give you the floor. Please give us an indication. I see we have a drawing in the file. Is there anything else you want to present? I brought some pictures of the existing. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. why, you want to start with <coughs> passing out? Sure, I only have that, four of That's okay, that's we'll okay. pass it around, give them back to you. You can have them, I just didn't copy enough. So um, the, uh, the blue line that's drawn over the first page, the first picture, uh, that's the existing uh, uh, elevation. Yeah, so that blue line indicates what, uh, if I had to meet the setback where the additional <coughs> line, it ends up right in the middle of those windows where we'd like to extend the kitchen. Uh, the second page, uh, we don't have a set of drawings yet, so we just superimposed what the addition would look like. And that's the addition? That's the Superimposed addition. on the site? Superimposed on the, on the building, yes. Okay. And the other, um, in red on page one, it says bedrooms. The other issue with trying to slide it all the way over is we block um, existing bedroom windows, which uh, we cannot do. All right, I'll, Charlie, I'll start on your end of the uh, table if you'd like to make some comments or ask some questions. Yeah, I have one question, <coughs> um, which is a nice thing to do, which is the second drawing, okay? That really explains it. Now, there is a jut out that comes down. I assume that's part of the garage underneath? Yes. Okay, yeah. and then my question is, is that looking at this, the 25 feet, that you're talking about must include that this way, right? It's, it's 25 feet long ways, yes. Right, so the actual kitchen is gonna be less than 25 feet on top. The kitchen's gonna be about 15 okay. by 20. Those red lines are just a, a deck railing. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. oh, that's good, okay, that's it, thank you. Right. How many dwelling units do you have in the building right now? It's a uh, two family. Two family? Um, just. Uh, the house has been in our family for 75 years. Uh, we had a decision to make, should we stay or should we go? Our kids are almost through college. So we decided to stay because we're attached to the house that's been in the family so long. And uh, we're just trying to make the kitchen a little bit bigger. Those windows <coughs> that I drew the blue line through, that actually, that room is actually about six feet wide. So that's the room that we're trying to make uh, larger. Thank you. Mark. Just so I got it in my brain, qualified. Did you see that, Michael? No. 20 years ago, I could. Yeah, me too. I'd be happy if I had a plan, though. Right here, this this is a house, and it juts out right here in the corner. Yes. Right? And this is just going to be squared off right to this piece. Yep. That's all exactly. I need to know. Yep. All right, thank you. Thanks. So, w what's on that floor now? <coughs> <that> <coughs> Is there a kitchen there now on that floor? There's a, yeah, there's a kitchen already there. Um, the area where those four windows are, where I drew the blue line through, is like a, just an eating area, but it's very small. It's only about six feet wide. Um, being an old house, they made rooms small back then. So we just look in, our addition is gonna kind of be a, an eating area and like a living room type, uh, one big open room. So, I guess the question is, adding the garage under, was that just a matter of convenience? Well, we're on the second floor, so right. my option was to put the whole thing on stilts or four by fours, or you know, make use of that area with a garage. <coughs> okay. Go ahead, yeah. No, I'm all set, I, all my questions have been answered. I'm all set. <clears throat> no questions. I have one question. Um, egress out of the basement. Is that <coughs> access out of the basement? Um, yeah, the, the new addition will, um, the basement will have a garage door and a regular service door. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Mike, another question before I, um, 
I turn it over to people in the audience. The existing shed that's on the property right now does not conform, correct? Right. Is that on concrete? Or is that um, on the shed? It's on uh, concrete piers. My grandfather built it probably 70 years ago. Um, I'm assuming you asked that question to see if it was movable. Um, <coughs> I guess it could be moved, but it would be expensive because it's an old. How big is that? Uh, it's about 8 by 10, 8 by 12. Under, <coughs> under 100 square feet. Okay. okay, anybody in the audience want to be heard on this application? If not, um, you have the last word before we close the hearing and we take it under advisement. Um, well, we you know, ask for a favorable um, a vote on our application. Again, my, you know, the house has been in my family for 75 years. Uh, we decided to stay instead of move. Uh, this just makes our living arrangements a little more comfortable. Um, we don't think that it uh, interferes with uh, the neighborhood. Uh, it's in the back of the house. Uh, it should maybe help the safety of congestion issues. Okay. We'll go over to your vote. Okay, great. All right, we'll close the hearing. Um, a couple of comments on, if you want to go right to the right to voting on this, I'm fine with it. I have a couple of comments. Um, not having a set of plans, I would make that a condition if we, if the board decided they wanted to go down that road to approve. In addition to that, it shall only be a single story structured um, area mm -hmm. concerning where the kitchen is and not um, having any access from the um, second floor apartment whatsoever. That's what your plan was, I'm assuming, correct? I didn't understand that. <coughs> well, you've gotten this, you, you, you're carrying this all the way up to the second story. Right, so the first, the basement's going to be about 12 feet high. Right. The basement ceiling. So you're not going to be tying in any of this to the second floor? That part of it, to, to our kitchen, yeah. You said you're on the main level here. No, no, no. The, the third, third, the third level floor. Here. The second, well, it's a walkout, so the third floor, but really it is the third floor, because it's a walkout basement. Is that your question, Dave? Yeah, it was. And what is this? A deck. So you're putting a deck on top of this yes. as well? Yes. That deck have stairs? No. We already have uh, two ways out of the blowing unit. OK. All right. What's the pleasure of the board? Who's oh, on this one, Dave? Huh? Who's on this? Uh, five, uh, the voting voting members of the full five members. Okay. Full time members. Good. I'll make a motion um, to go forward with this subject to uh, them um, having some plans so we know exactly. And plan approval by the building department. plan approval by the building department. Anybody else? Second on that or no? I'll second. I don't have a second? Yeah. You have a second? Okay. Um, all those in favor, signify by, by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That's unanimous. Okay. All right, you know, you know the procedure, 20 day appeal period. Yep. yep. All right, thank you. Okay, hey, thank good you. luck. Okay, right on to the second hearing on time, I believe. Again, gentlemen, I, I just checking everybody have any client conflicts on this hearing. If not, we'll keep it the same. You got it? Okay. This is on the application of American Power. Much gone up front, sir. <coughs> uh, okay. American Power, 
LP and American Towers LLC special permit relief pursuant to section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw in relation to the property 120 Highland Street, uh, also known as 100 Highland Street, shown on the assessor's map 36 lot 25. This special permit is relief is to sought for the altercation of a non conforming structure in use through the replacement of an existing 300 foot AGL guided tower with a modern self supporting lattice tower at the height of 300 feet. AGL included the relocation and the replacement of an existing antennas and equipment from the existing 300 foot guide tower <laughs> to uh, a new self support lattice tower. You being represented by Councillor or anything tonight, or are you doing this on your own? I'll be doing it on my own. Matt Russell from American Tower is here with me. Okay, great. Okay, I'll just shoot right to the application. Um, <coughs> And the question asked by the applicant, explain the reasons that the special permit is sought in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw. The replacement of the existing non conforming guided tower with a self supporting structure will dramatically reduce the overall tower footprint on the site and will not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non conforming guided tower, guide wires, and anchors. Concerning the question, um, the proposed use of the premises will not create undue traffic congestion or impair uh, pedestrian safety. The applicant states there will be no change in the amount of traffic generated yeah, I was site as a result of the right? protected property. There you go. Concerning the uh, proposed use of the premises will not uh, cause harm to the neighborhood or create a nuisance or hazard affecting the health, safety, and welfare of the general public. The applicant states there will be no change in the use of the premises as a result of the proposed project. With that, um, in the file, I believe they in front of planning board. <coughs> planning board did review this on their March 29th hearing, and um, they did uh, they did uh, provide to give us a favorable recommendation. The uh, proposal to replace the 300 foot guide wire uh, with a new 300 foot self supporting lattice tower. The new lattice tower is to be constructed adjacent to the existing tower. The antennas and equipments will be re re relocated from the old tower to the new tower, but the, the old tire guide wires and anchors will then be removed from the site. The proposed tower will not be more noticeable than the existing tower. The fall zone for the 300-foot lattice tower is calculated to be 120 feet, well within the limits of the, of the parcel on which it is located. Therefore, a uh, favorable recommendation was motioned to move over from town planner Larry Duncan. So with that, let's turn it over to you, sir, and uh, kind of explain to us your format, what you're taking down, what you're putting up, and have make sure the public can see that. If you can't get them on camera, would you give us an idea so that uh, we can make sure the public sees this as well? Okay. That looks good. That's visible. Okay, let me uh, try to get out of the way a little bit. So can you can you grab one of those hand microphones? <coughs> Thank you. Green is good, right? Green's good. Uh, so first of all, my name is Ed Parry. It's P-A-R-E. I'm an attorney at Brown Rudnick representing American Tower. Uh, back in the 1960s, prior to all of the cell phone services, etc., uh, there was a tower constructed at the on the lot. And just to clarify for the board members who don't deal with this all of the time, this is considered a guide tower. So it's a, it's a tower that has a very small footprint but requires guy wires. So over time, uh, as maintenance or the tower has to be strengthened, additional guy wires are attached. So I'm going to put up this plan because you can't really see the guy wires in the photo. But this is an elevation depiction of the existing guide tower. So you have the steel that runs up from the ground, and then you have these guy wires, which are anchored. <coughs> and I refer to the anchors pretty frequently in the application materials. They're big blocks of cement holding the steel cables. So to give you a perspective of what the plan is, we currently have, and this is a uh, overhead view, Highland Street runs here, uh, water tank is here, the sort of where the three guy wires come together in the middle of the plot is where the tower is located. And you'll see that these black lines depict where the guy wires go and then they're anchored in three spots. 
What we're proposing to do is to put a self-supporting tower, which is a more modern tower. We don't need guy wires. Uh, it's freestanding. It'll, have, it'll be on three legs, which is why we represent it with the triangle here. So we're shifting it about 25 feet to the south. Once we do that and get it constructed and get the carriers and the users of the guide tower over to the new structure, we're going to remove the guide tower. So <coughs> this will eventually be replaced. Totally. Totally. It will be gone. The anchors will be removed. The guide wires will be gone. Can I see that plan? Can I have that? This? Certainly. Yeah. Thanks. So this is a, did you have, do you want to, do you have oh, questions go, for us? Go, you want go, to continue? Go, go ahead. So this is the overall site plan of the property. Again, the center of the property is where the guide wire, the guide tower is located. And just to the south is where the self-supporting tower is proposed. Again, the guide, the guide wires will be removed. And looking at the elevation of the self-supporting tower, as we had, the guide tower here, it'll have a larger base, but there'll be no guide wires coming out towards the property lines. So the goal is to reduce or make <coughs> less detrimental the replacement of the guide tower with the self-supporting tower, move the carriers, move the users of the tower over to the new tower, remove the old one. We think it'll be a substantial improvement to the neighborhood, significantly reducing the overall footprint of these guy wires and anchor. That's pretty much the gist of it. The tower was constructed sometime in the 60s. It's old. It needs to be replaced. It's at capacity. We have done all we can to strengthen it. So at this point, the tower just frankly needs to be replaced. And this is the more modern version of these guide towers. As I mentioned in our uh, application materials, it's a non-conforming use. It's a non-conforming structure. Uh, so the board's charge is to make a finding that the use in the structure is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than what's there currently. I do have some photographs, and we have extras for folks in the audience. <coughs> these, are all, these are all the same pictures. It's all the same. Yeah, you just have to. Who owns the land that the tower's on? American, uh, American Tower owns the land. American Tower owns the tower. Okay. One's the a limited partnership. One's an LLC, I believe. How many, ca how many different carriers are on the tower? There are, there are quite a few. Uh, we have, uh, for example, we have Verizon, Metro PCS, what used to be Nextel is now Sprint. Um, we have emergency services, EMT. Uh, there are a significant number of users. And will the new tower be able to accommodate more people, more users? Or, or it would. It'll be str it'll be stronger. So as the as you're probably seeing, the wireless carriers have upgraded, continue to add equipment up on the tower. So yet it'll have more capacity, certainly. Uh, well, how much more capacity? Like 30, 40 percent? Uh, you know, it's 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 hard to tell. It's a bit. I mean, it's got a lot of stuff on it already, and will. Uh, so the goal is to take care of our existing <coughs> uh, It's a hard question to answer how many, but certainly be able to accommodate more. So there are some limitations due to height. So these antennas, as you see, get staggered. So you can't put AT&T and then put Verizon right underneath it. There has to be some separation. General rule of thumb is 10 feet. So you do have some limitation about how much you can get up there. Uh, but it could certainly accommodate more. We could have a situation where, you know, somebody up in this area comes off the tower, which would make available you know, additional space for somebody else. What about this other tower? 
Uh, that other tower is on a different property. That's uh, it's not part of that, you guys. It's not part of ours. No, the, the what's interesting, the water department, I don't know if it's a town property or private water, has the water tank and they have a tower next door to it. I think there's only one carrier on it. And this is the one that gets And currently, right now, when I went in there, it's, you have a, you have a fence gate down here? We do. Is that going to continue to stay? It will, except the tower will actually be shifting to that side, so we'll have to okay. make some modification. It will be fenced. You know, the expensive part of the uh, development is the equipment at the base of it. So we'll have to make some changes, <coughs> but it will, the tower will continue to be fenced in. And how much that new tower, what will, it, what will the tower have around it for security? Uh, it'll be the same fence as we same, have. Same fence? Yes. It'll be extended over to pick up the tower. Uh, we'll start with you, Charlie. Oh, all right. Um, will there be much disruption to the neighborhood with the installation of this tower, bringing in that equipment and so forth? There won't. One thing we, I mean, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out the best way to handle this. Uh, so we've moved it. This is cleared already, so we tried to keep as much tree cover as we could and maintain it. Uh, so we chose this particular location. Obviously, we already have the access road there. Uh, so it'll be a matter of some excavation to, to get the site ready around the tower location. We don't have to do a lot of movement because the equipment is all close by. The new tower would be adjacent to all of those equipment cabinets and equipment shelters. There'll be cement trucks going in to get it, to get the foundation in place. The tower will be stacked you know, relatively quickly. Uh, and so there won't be significant, not significant, uh, and I would assume it's brought in uh, basically in pieces on, on flatbeds? Correct. Okay. So you'll have to get a crane at least that can reach up to the top of that and set it down on it? Yes. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Brian. Nothing, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mark? Quick uh, question regarding 300 feet high. Correct. With the nearest property, personal property. Uh, the nearest approximately property. How <coughs> <coughs> approximately how many feet away? I'll tell you exactly. The property, the closest property line is 126 feet from the new tower. 126 feet. 126. And your breakoff zone on, if we have a natural disaster as is specified, is 120. Correct. The engineers designed the tower. Well, you can sort of see it on this, uh, on this satellite shot. There's a red circle here, uh, and you'll see it on your site plan also. That's the limitation of the 120-foot fall zone. And you'll see it's within all of the, uh, it's on the America Tower uh, parcel. I'm not sure 126 is right. Let me just check. No, 120. Well, 120 was the break. No, I, was, uh, I was just looking for, yeah, it's 120, <coughs> which, fits, which fits on the American Tower property. Okay. But you asked how far away the uh, nearest home was. Right. Nearest. Well, if, if on the plan, yeah, it's, from the on the plan from the center to the to act to an actual house, yeah. you're showing 260, 240. Yeah, I'm talking about the property line. Let me right. I I'll, I could pick it out. 193. Yep. Yeah, the closest. I'm measuring from the closest uh, leg of the new self-supporting tower. <coughs> To the property uh, assessors 36448, um, the Maranta, Marantas, it's 126 feet from that point. To their property line, right? To their property line, correct. The, um, the failure rate on these is what? Well, pretty much zero. I mean, they're designed not, That's they're designed not, not to a fail. natural disaster. Correct. Okay. And these are deemed to be much more safer are better than what's currently there. Not, not what's currently there, but the current design that's there. Oh, sir, oh much better than the guide tower, without question. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A um, couple of questions on the lighting aspect. Um, mm -hmm. Your flashing beacons, I see <coughs> you've got them at certain levels. Um, you've got a mid-level LED flash heads at 150 feet. It's showing on the plan, and then you've got it at the top of it. Yes. So how many actual, how much, how much does this light up? 
Uh, Does it imp will it impede any any bright, very bright lights to any of the neighbors? No, I mean it's any of the towers that are over 200 feet have a light, you know, are lit. Uh, from the FAA requirements, so we satisfy those requirements. Uh, I haven't run into situations where you know we've had issues or complaints. Uh, it's more just a marking for the you know, airplanes and you know required. So I don't. Th Again, I, I've never heard of a situation where we've had complaints over the FAA lighting. There's no floodlights, though. Correct? Yeah, there's no no no. no there's flood no floodlights lights. coming off the town. No, there are not. <coughs> I just had one question about how long does it take for you to um, install this and then remove the other? Are we talking like weeks, months? 60 days. Probably 30 to 60 days total. Okay, so a couple of months. Mm. All right. And I all the access will be from Highland Street? Correct. Right. I, I do want to be clear. We need to construct the, you know, the, the, there are current users on the guide poles, so we'll construct the new one. There'll be some period of time where the two poles will be up there, but then the, uh, well, that, that was it will be, be my removed. Question: right. Do the leases affect that? The current leases affect the transfers over to the new pole? Oh, certainly. I mean, they. So this could in, be a two-year process. Is what? That's what we're asking. Oh no 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 no! It's a thirty <coughs> to sixty-day process to stack the new self-supporting tower. We'll then move everybody over and re remove the tower. So the leases will transfer over to the new tower. Whatever people have left are just coming to the new tower. So if that's your concern, no, that's not. Well, it's not going to stay up for two more years. Well, my concern is for disruption to the neighborhood right. there. If this is going to be going on for a couple of years, that. No. Well, I wanted to be able to have a condition in there that, that after so many days of the new tower going online, <coughs> the demolition occurs and that, that old site is removed. So that's. That there needs to be some language in your decision concerning that. When you when you go to the public comment, I'll pay attention to the questions, but I'll I'll see if we can come up with a time frame and we can okay, give fine. the board sense. Okay. Uh, Dave, John, John. Uh, Three hundred foot, foot tower. Is that a standard tower, uh, or are you only going three hundred feet? because there's already a 300-foot tower there. We, I, that is a lot of it. There's a 300-foot tower there, and we have leases for our current tenants up at the top. So we're above <coughs> a typical wireless tower. This is not a typical wireless tower, if you ask me if it's typical. Uh, they're typically 199 feet. Uh, so in this instance, we have 300 feet. We have tenants that will use the space up at the top, uh, up to 300 feet. Um, we think it's a vast improvement from the guy wires and the guide itself, uh, the guide tower itself. Um, Are there benefits to 300 feet as opposed to the 190? Well, we have we have tenants that need the height, so I'm saying right. These are not these are not all wireless, as you'll see. <coughs> the antennas are a bit different. If you look at the kind of fence-looking installation uh, running here, that would be tip your typical AT&T and Verizon. But we have other tenants that need additional height: paging companies, EMT, and you'll see these more as whip what we call whip antennas which are just those single poles. Uh, but, but towers are, it really depends what it's being used for. You see the ones in Newton, you know, they're 14 or 1,500 feet. So when you, when you ask, <coughs> is it typical, they're all different. Some are 90 feet, some are 1,500. The town of Milford need, need access for that? We'd certainly be happy to talk to them if they, you know, need you should service. Be, you should private. <coughs> <laughs> now we don't, you know, I can tell you, I don't know who is on this tower. From my experience, I see there are two carriers up at the top, and then there are microwave dishes. So it's possible your police and fire are using that tower also. I, I don't know. Would you provide a location for them on this town? I think we would work with the town. I think that, if they could I contact think that us. that would be the, 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 the business aspect of what you would. We do it frequently. If someone should offer. If there are public safety needs, uh, we're happy to discuss that with police, fire, and uh, emergency personnel. Any questions? Any more? No, sir? No. Anybody else? Okay, with that, I'll turn it over to the public comments. Anybody in the uh, audience? Like, sure, please stand up, uh, provide your name, and uh, ask away. I'm uh, Tom Montagani. Uh, if they want, could you put that plot, overhead plot thing up there? <coughs> just, yeah, just, yep, yeah, that's one. 
that blue spot right up on the top, right up on the very top center, is a pool in my backyard. Bought the house in 1980. Western Union owned that tower, first of all. It was a microwave tower from Western Union. That area in the back was always kept clear. It was mowed. It kept to maybe get up to two feet, but that was always kept clear. It was a clear area in the back, and I was told originally it was supposed to be left that way. That's how Lane got permission to build all his houses. All that being said, I don't know if that's written down anywhere, that area stayed clear for many years. When that second tower was built, nobody took care of that property anymore. That green you see there, now all of a sudden it's got a pool. I can't go in after 6 o'clock because the mosquitoes are all back. Hornets are back. Rabbits in the backyard. Poison ivy all over the place and ticks. Now, I've spoken, <coughs> spoken to the health department. They just feel it went back to natural state. There's nothing they can do about it, and there probably isn't anything they can do about it. What they've done with that property, or I should say didn't do with that property, perfectly legal. That's all I'm saying is, in our, in our feeling is, American Tower is not a good neighbor, and in fact, that, that is disruptive. It's not the tower. Never worried about the tower, although my mother-in-law did. She always thought it was going to fall on the house. But I never worried about the tower. The towers are not disruptive. Those lights don't bother anybody, at least. And we have a clear shot from where we are to the top of that tower. It's not a problem. The problem is the rest of the property. I'm just curious if they have any plans to try and put that property back to where it was when they bought it, because they haven't done anything to it since then. Uh, it's a constant struggle with poison ivy, <coughs> it's a constant struggle with the animals in the backyard, and I am just curious. As far as the tower goes, I don't have a problem with the tower. I have a quick question for you. Is it fenced back there? No. It's just naturally treated? Yeah. So you, you got to keep the poison ivy from encroaching back on. When they were, I don't know who mowed the grass. I have no idea whether it's Western Union or the town or whatever. I have no idea. But we put a fence up on the back, so I started mowing six feet outside so the tractor who was pulling the stuff around would, would have an easier job doing it. So I've always mowed in the back. Now it's a matter of I have to mow, I have to cut back bushes, I have to spray poison ivy every year to keep it off the property. Um, as I said, I've spoken it's to the health control, department. It's out of control. Yeah, yeah, just there's, dogs used to run out there, occasionally get ticks. They don't go out there anymore because there's no way to go through that. You, you it's, it's, it has gone back to its natural state, although prior to it being mowed down, it was an apple orchard. So I'm not sure that is natural state because it was an apple orchard. <coughs> I, that's, that's my only question. I, I, as far as the towers go, I don't have a problem with the tower. Sir, it's, what number are you on Stanford? One. Number and one? ironically, it's the very end of the circle. We're a cul-de-sac, and they're numbered backwards. So, Sir, thank you for your comments. Very helpful. Thank, thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Anyone else? Okay, with that, uh, sir, you have the last word before we <coughs> take it under advice. Uh, I, I did talk to Matt about uh, uh, the construction piece of things. Uh, I think we just have to be careful with the wording if, if we could, but we could, we could certainly, once this tower is stacked and the tenants are moved over, which is not a leasing issue, but just getting everybody over into the new tower, we could remove the other tower within 90 days. There. Okay, so you're talking 60 days occupancy. to put it up and then 90 more days? Yeah. 90 more days. Once you're we get everybody. five months to get the whole thing? I just, I'm just well, that's why we need. Well, that's why we need to be a little careful because we need to, we need to move the people that are on the guy. We need to put the new tower in place, which we anticipate 60 yep. days. Okay. We need to move the, everybody over to the new tower and get them functional. That could take a little time, not a lease or a two-year time period, but some period of time to get everybody over we it. Need, we, the cables, we need to have some guide right. time. And then from that point, everybody's moved. We can start tearing it down. It'll be gone in 90 days. Now, what about ad addressing Mr. Uh, Mr. Martigini's um, <coughs> situation over there about clearing out that, some of that stuff over there and, and trying to make the, their lives a little bit easy living without... Yeah. Um, overgrown. Can you show me on the map? I... Would it be helpful it's, to have a fence put up there? Or? It's, it's unlikely that American Tower cleared, <laughs> clears anything because they do I towers know. and then let it go. I know. I, I understand that. This is, the, this is the property here. Okay, these trees are in. We have a fence right here. 
and these trees are inside the fence. This little barrier here is where I plow. Somebody cleared that out last year sometime. Now, got up in the morning on a Monday and it was all cleared. Everything's been pushed back here. That was not done by Merman Tower, the best of my knowledge. So there's a, you know, there's a little access around here and around, but I just tried to keep that clear. But this whole area here, not from on this side here, this was all a field. When they bought it, that's what it was. <coughs> You're in the tower business. And, and I understand that. I don't have a problem with the towers. The tower isn't the construction of the towers isn't going to be a problem either. This is very annoying because all of a sudden I have a backyard that I'm going to use. If we can, if we can satisfy. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm asking a question. If we can satisfy the two of butters over there, and maybe pre, uh, you know, give them some safety of saying, you know, let's clear out 10 feet further from his property line back and keep that clean and free of debris. Would that help? Yeah, I'll clear it out. I just don't want somebody from American Tower all of a sudden yelling at me that I'm on their property because they, they shouldn't have to. They should. Well, I do it anyway because I have to to, to keep this stuff. And I have, this, I have a couple trees that overhang, yeah. and I keep them trimmed on their side, but they overhang. It's not a, this isn't as dense right here as, as it looks, but it's uh, as far as the you know the the mosquitoes, the ticks, the poison ivy. It's it's a never ending battle unless you unless you go back to the field. Yeah, I, if it got moved back ten feet, would make it a little bit easier. You have a chain link yeah. fence, sir. No, it's a wood. Type. So we have, we would have no issue with him with ha him maintaining that and clearing it, having access. Absolutely not. And then, you, then you'll be able to get. <coughs> you'll, be, you'll be you'll be entitled to adverse possession. Come on, kids. <laughs> but I, it, it's really it's not as hard as it looks, especially because when they when they did this, they took down the tree. That's here. fine. It's uh, so, so if I put a condition that he's got he's got you know, access, 10-foot access to maintain around his personal property. Would that be, be okay? That would be fine with yeah, us. So that's be, just being a good neighbor. Is, is, Thank you very much. Is 10 enough or do you need 20? <coughs> <coughs> Now's the time. <laughs> I'm going I'm to recommend 15, so I'll tell you right now. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Okay. Whatever they go, I go back as far as I, I could. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I just, I don't want, I don't want, you want, you want kind of what you were there before. So if yeah, we need to give you 15 feet or so or 20 feet to work with, so you've got some <coughs> not getting everything into into your, yeah. it is, uh, it, I think that'll be fine. Thank you. And that's, that's fine with us. Okay, perfect. That's Dave, perfect. can I say one thing? Sure. My stipulation would be 15 feet back, American Tower clears it, you maintain it. That's my stipulation. Yeah, I could go for that. He's got to wait close to me. I don't think there'd be a problem with that. I mean, I think they're going to be good neighbors. Um, we don't have a problem with it. Do, uh, fencing. Are you going to do new fencing? Because uh, I know I went up there. The, the fences are pretty rotted and rusted and um, around um, that area. A couple of the gates. One of the gates was totally damaged. I would assume that you're going to be <coughs> you're going to be you're going to probably want new security. We are because we'll be bringing the fence down to, you know, further south to, okay. you know, pull in so we'll repair and replace what we need to with as far as what's in behind again that will probably occur once we get this big thing out of there okay um, all right great okay with that um, if you're good we're good I'm good and thank you very much for your right, attention we'll close the hearing and um, if board members want to do you want to handle this after next hearing or do you want to handle this now I'll do it now okay so what were they? Mark had something. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna provide American Power. We'll um, ninety days from. <coughs> first of all, we're gonna have American Power um, clear twenty, clear out twenty feet on the abutters property of one Sanford Circle, and he will maintain it once it's cleared out. That way there, he doesn't have a heart attack trying to clear that stuff out, you sh and you shouldn't have to. Um, that's fine. The other condition that I I'll recommend is that um, the old tower to be removed. <coughs> to be 
Monogani. <coughs> no, no, going back, why don't you list the address and Mr. Monogani's name? I do. I have it. Okay. Here. All right. Okay. The old, the old ad, the, the old tower, to be removed, um, no later than 90 days after the last vendor attaches to the new tower. Uh, if I'd like to see the fencing. I, when I was up there, the, 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 some of the gates were destroyed and, and damaged, and the, some of the fencing was completely uh, rusted out. So I'd like to make a, uh, um, I'd like to make a condition in there that the, the fencing, the, the, the new fencing is provided around the new facility. And um, <coughs> any additional fencing on the site is to be replaced where needed. And I don't know if you can spray paint it so it's not rusted. Have anything else? I have a motion for that? I'll make a motion. A motion on that can be second by Dave. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. you know the process, the 20 day appeal, okay? All that. Great. Thanks so much, okay, gentlemen. Appreciate the clarity. And thank you for working with the neighbors. It was very helpful. And I'm sure they, they appreciate it very much. Look at it, you know, it means it's very, very strange. You know. I got problems at my house. I got to move my house. I got fish and cats trying to break through the screen. My, son, my son's caught the so deep. It's like my kids all got it. One night I come out with a fish and cat was right in my front yard. I understand the, uh, and I said, I don't even know. No, I feel fine. Just say it. So, just say with him, it feels fine. Yeah, he's <laughs> out of it. Oh, he's I wasn't going outside, not at like 3 in the morning. What did you tell him? I had a lot of people. My oldest is a high school teacher. I think he's a little bit of everything at this point. Daughter, she's a little bit of a kid. She's a little bit of a kid. My wife's a teacher. In the first year or two, she's sick every 15 minutes. She's got seasons. Nice, nice. Once a year. And then kids are basically the first time. I haven't, had, I haven't had it. Catch up time. Okay. <coughs> With that, we are all set for the next hearing. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you guys. Have a great night. Jim, I know you have to open the hearing, but I understand that you're posting. Yes, John, you missed it because you were out talking. Um, the hosting on the outside board was done in 24 hours, not 48 hours. Therefore, every applicant's been put on notice that an opportunity that may come up, that may may offer an appeal. You're going to waive that? It's really not a 48 appeal. It's a Right, correct. I'd rather not get into that situation. 
So we don't want to jeopardize it. Right. Yeah. I don't mind jeopardizing the financing. It's the opinion of council I don't want to jeopardize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I well, want to continue. We, we can, there's no disability for the applicant by the way. <coughs> okay. Uh, <coughs> okay, we are opening the meeting on the application of um, Claflin Street Limited Partnership. A special permit relief in uh, relation to the parcel of land located at 135 and 7 Cena Holloway in Claflin. And uh, at this point in time, there will be a continuance on this hearing based on the posting from the open meeting law. And we will push that meeting off to May 12th, Mr. Fernandez. You need my pen? I've taken the pen from the press. <laughs> So we've, we've opened the panel, <laughs> opened the meeting with all five members, all full-time members. Okay. So the period is till um, May 12th. May 12th. Congratulations on your retirement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think you're going to be able to teach if I'm around. <laughs> Thank you, John. Super. Okay. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. All right, gentlemen, that, that ends our, uh, yeah, our, our to hearings. We have a motion by Mary. Thank you so much. Thank you. Goodbye, Dave. Thanks, uh, All those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Have a great night. Steve, we've got to get a name.